Thank you. Right. Uh, the reason why we do the recording is more for our own purposes. Yeah, for our record purposes. So for the participant, unfortunately, our house rule will actually be that uh, you are not allowed to do the recording. But please do keep in touch with us. We wanted to answer all your questions. If we don't actually have an answer for you, we will look for the answer for you. Yeah? This is always the, the type of uh, working approach that uh, Shai Ka Ong actually have. So the reason why we wanted to actually do our sharing today is because um, we as a tax consultant, we have actually had a few important encounters and we, we, we think that is so important that we actually highlight to all the employers out there, right? So it's actually an encounter that we also find it difficult to actually manage uh, from, from then on because a lot of things was actually in the past. One thing about Indian Revenue is that they, they send you their audit today, they wanted to audit today, but they are audit something that is in the past, right? So you are always being caught in a situation, right? That you are not able to, to handle it. Yeah. So, um, okay. For the team, please manage the waiting room, yeah, for everybody to, to come in as and when they are here. So some of your questions may be answered through our slide presentation, but please continue posting the question. My team, we have a total of about eight to nine tax team, but Shakao is actually having about eight or eight to ten of us basically together with the managers tax team, and I have all of them signing in today to help to answer things in the chat room at the same time. Okay, so without further ado, allow me to go straight directly into my presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we call the topic of today to be latest development in the preparations of Form E, EA, and as well as the PCB audit. So the, the way that we present today, it will not be a, like a really craft rooted into what is a responsibility, what is an audit and such. So it is actually interchange at the same time. Yeah, okay. So, okay. Um, Team, uh, for those of you who is actually managing the waiting room to admit in, please uh, help me to actually remit in. Eh? Otherwise, it's actually disturbing my screen. All right. Okay. Let's go straight into answering this question. Why every company or businesses? When we talk about businesses, we are referring to uh, uh, sole proprietorship partnership. Okay, we're referring to this particular entity. So now, why every company or businesses, whether having employees or otherwise, need to pay attention to the filing of Form E. Why? Actually, the inner revenue currently, as we speak, uh, they are actively doing the auditing and imposing penalties on companies or businesses that actually having Form E number already, E number has been allocated to them, but Form E has not been submitted. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, there is a key word here, yeah. So as far as the inner revenue is concerned, it's not so much about whether you are actually having uh, uh, employee or not. Yeah, We are talking about whether there is an E number being already assigned to you or not. So the moment that there is an E number being assigned to you, a submission of the form required to be done. So the question on whether there is an employee or employee, uh, whether there is an employee, that is a separate question to actually handle. So this is the stance that the inner revenue is carrying at this moment as we speak. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, some of you may, may have new registration of companies. Some of you may already have company for many, many years. Huh? So how your e-number is actually being assigned? Of course, you can apply for the e-number directly, right? Because you have employee, so you got to actually apply for it. But actually, you can be auto-assigned by the tax authority sometime without you knowing right, including some of the dormant company that you may have set up, okay? So the auto assignment by the tax authority is the one that is being caught off guard or a situation whereby the company used to have employee, but throughout the year due to various reasons, it doesn't, it, it choose to actually have the business cease already. So the company is actually dormant. So under that circumstances, right, what is the authority sense? The authority sense as we speak today, until further amendments, is you still need to actually do the submission. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go down to what is the responsibility of an employer. Number one, of course, of course, as an employer, if you are an, an employer, okay, you need to register an e-number for it. So this one, I'm just going to go through very quickly for registration. Yeah, for an e-number, you can always do through an e dafter approach that is actually to a HASIL portal. And then you can actually uh, re refer to the guide on how to fill up the form. Yeah, allow me to maybe pick up my spotlight here, right? 
okay, for, for you to actually go through all these links. Any successfully submitted, uh, after successfully submitted the application, do remember uh, to record down what is your normal per permohonan for you to actually check on the status three, three working days later. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, our approach is we are more than happy to pass you our slides. Yeah. So if you need our slide eventually, uh, please uh, keep, uh, keep in touch with my team and we will be more than happy to, to pass it on. So for the time being, sit back, relax and listen will do. Yeah. Yeah. You can check on your status on the ETH data uh, at, at the Hasil website as well. Now, the tricky part is the auto assignment of employer number that may actually be done. Right, through and micro ID. Actually, the government may have already automatically do an assignment. Yeah, this practice, uh, this practice has been on since maybe the year 2020 or maybe slightly before that. Okay, maybe 2019 or 2018. Right, so they start practicing this already, whereby the moment that the company is actually being registered, very often uh, they also start assigning the C number as well as the E number. And to be honest, uh, those that we have seen so far, many of them come from Chawang and Wangsa Maju. I'm not sure whether any of you receive from any other branches, but this example that we have was actually from Wangsa Maju. You will realize that they will allocate, of course, the name, they will allocate the C number, and they will automatically allocate an E number. Okay, now... After the registration is done, of course, we start talking about the monthly deductions, right? As an employer, you need to start deduct your, your employee remuneration. Now, ladies and gentlemen, moving on uh, after this a couple of slides, we wanted to be able to uh, highlight to you on some of the tax audit uh, that we have actually encountered. Beforehand, a quick introduction. PCB is a mechanism where the employee deductions of employee salary on a monthly basis need to be done, okay? And PCB, eh? PCB is determined by either using, number one, a computerized payroll calculation method. Number two, the e jadra PCB. Some people may still want to actually go through the manual form. Number three, the IRB portal, whereby they have what they call a PCB calculator. You can use any of these three. Now, we wanted to take this opportunity to highlight to you on number one, right here. What do they mean by computerized payroll calculation method, ladies and gentlemen? In fact, if you go to the Lembaga website, you will realize there is this uh, particular footnote. Like we give you a footnote here, whereby that talks about which one, basically in a way, I don't know whether you call it accredited, but basically it's endorsed and approved by them. Huh? Uh, whereby this can be a payroll vendor system, right? So I would like to actually have my colleague, uh, um, let me just uh, stop share right here, leading to actually share with you, when you click onto that footnote, what do you actually see? You will see that some of the in-house software, some of the in-house software was actually being uh, um, approved by the system, by the SSM, uh, sorry, by the Lembaga Hasil. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are using your own ERP system uh, to actually come up with a payroll system, please do yourself a favor. Go to the Lembaga Hasil, let them take a look at it. Let them put it into this list for you. Okay, why? Because if you do not put yourself into this particular list, all right. Or if you actually subscribe to any of the other vendor outside and they are not part of this list, if you are being identified for tax audit purposes, PCB tax audit purposes, the differential, the differential that is identified may come out with penalty that you do not want it to be um, uh, having that responsibility in paying. You know what I mean? So it's very important, ladies and gentlemen, you check through this list. If you are using an off-the-shelf uh, payroll system, please go to the Lembaga website going through. Yeah, as you can see, it's hundreds of them. Some of them is actually in-house. Big organization with a, yeah. Maybe, Lin, you can stop on some of the in-house. Like, say, for example, uh, uh, this one, you say, number 112, right, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So, you can see that uh, Watson, Watson, uh, Watson, go and apply. Right, to say that, hey, my, 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 how do you call my payroll system, my calculator, yeah, is actually part of what the bunker has you have endorsed. See, you see, Watson, 
who is also having their payroll doing in-house, right? They're having it over there, right? But there are others that is actually software provider. Okay, we can start on the software provider, right? So software provider, the Panda payroll, Panda system, Silver Lake, for example, you know, the one with the cloud, et cetera, et cetera. So ladies and gentlemen, it is actually very important that you check whether the payroll software system that you're using or if you're using uh, an ERP system or you are doing your in-house payroll, please make sure you go and apply for it, okay? Thank you very much, Ling. Yeah. So uh, where do you actually look for that information, ladies and gentlemen? You can actually go for this particular footnote that we put down here, yeah? Uh, hustle.gov, yeah, there is this particular link. Like I said, not to worry of, of not being able to copy all this because Shaka Ong, we are more than happy to pass you our slide that we actually present to everybody, okay? So PCB is determined uh, via number one, computerized, number two, e jadwa, number three, your, e your EPF, uh, your, your, your PCB calculated via the IRB portal, all right? Okay. So even though, ladies and gentlemen, even though you have followed the e, uh, the, the calculator here, the PCB calculator, and your system is actually using this calculator to produce this particular software vendor, please ensure the vendor, or if it is in-house, you still apply for it, okay? Now, so submission of the PCB statements, okay, can be done through the e-data PCB and, e and all, all these other uh, official portal that's provided by the Indian Revenue. So those of you who are actually having some, I'm sure you will know how to do this already. So ladies and gentlemen, the consequences of not deducting correctly, yeah? the consequences of not deducting correctly is a penalties. Okay, a fine of not less than 200 and not more than 20,000 will actually be imposed. Inside these consequences of failure, it actually have this thing, what we call uh, the uh, jail term. But so far, we have not seen any employer going to jail for it. Uh, but we do see very common about the penalty that they actually impose. Now, here are a few scenarios, two scenarios that we wanted to share with everybody. This is a real scenario. It actually came from our own case study. Okay, allow me to go through this in detail. Huh? All right, let me just move my screen a little bit so that my screen is actually not being blocked. Huh? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this particular client of mine, okay, first of all, the Inner Revenue did a PCB audit, okay, and then came out, came out huh, with this particular table for us. The first is, they call it PCB Sepatutnya Dipotong done the remit, huh? okay? So PCB calculated by inner revenue is this number. Based on what the employer has calculated, this is the number and this is what they have remitted. So whatever they bought on from the system, from the payroll, they actually remit out, okay? They actually remit out. So this is actually is the information that was in hand, okay? Now, so based on the tax audit, uh, the, the, the PCB tax audit, the actual PCB should be deducted and remitted are actually different from what the employer has deducted and remitted. So over here, there are differences. Ladies and gentlemen, if you pay attention, if you're using your computer to actually look into our screen right now, you realize that the inner revenue amount is 3,520, whereas uh, the employer is 3,480. So basically, we saw that there is actually a kurangan dipotong, eh? kurangan dipotong, which is 40 ringgit, a small 40 ringgit for the month of January to September. Okay. And then from November and December, uh, it's actually 60 ringgit. Okay. So in total, the difference is 480 ringgit. So what is the inland revenue decision was? Okay. They came up. They came up with a, with with the with their finding to say that number one, yes, you have this forty ringgit, and then your compound dikenakan is actually two hundred ringgit per month. Okay, so which is ten percent eh, of the kesalahan, okay, of the under declared amount or two hundred whichever was higher. So for this particular uh, client of mine, actually, the penalty, whichever how we actually did the appeal it was actually 2,200 and our client has diligently paid for it in order to close this particular case. Now, 
What came to our surprise, ladies and gentlemen, is actually this particular uh, audit finding that was actually done on our client as well. Okay, now it is because of this actually, is it because of this, my team thinks that we want to inform the public. <laughs> we wanted to inform the public. Again, based on the inner revenue calculation, actually the employee are not subject to PCB deduction. Eh? Sub, not subject, totally not subject. Eh? Okay, based on the inner revenue calculation, the employee are not subject to, to deduction. However, the employer, when they do their PCB calculation, they actually did a deductions. They did a deductions. All right. So they have taken the PCB uh, portion, right, from their, their, from, from their staff. And this is the PCB portongan that was actually done on a monthly basis. So, yeah? so however, based on the employer, yeah, uh, has deducted, the, the employer has deducted PCB based on the employee salary. So, other than, and then the table show, uh, the table show, other than the month of January and July, other than the month of January and July, the employer has remit all the PCB it deducted from the employee salary to the Indian Revenue Board. So our client uh, has not just deduct the money and keep it in the pocket. They have actually remit the money. However, they, they forgot to remit the January month as well as uh, July month for some reason. There was a slight difference on how much the remittance was actually being made. Okay. So we noted that in the month of January, the employer failed to remit. Okay. In the month of July, we noted that they actually shot for in remittance 73 ringgit. Okay. However, ladies and gentlemen, this particular case, per the Indian revenue calculation, the client, the taxpayer, do not the employer do not require to give PCB at all. Okay, so this is a case of remittance. What is the inner revenue finding? The inner revenue finding is this is the conclusion that actually made huh? the PCB less remitted. Yeah, for January and July is actually 5,000 ringgit. Okay, however, the inner revenue have penalized the taxpayer. Yeah, the have penalized the taxpayer 1,000 ringgit per month for the less remittance for these two months, right? As a result, the conclusion after all the appeal, after all the effort being done, the case is closed with the client. The client suffered 7,000 in payment to the Inner Revenue Board. 5,121 comes from the amount that the remittance did not make. And then 2,000 ringgit is actually come from the remittance that failed, uh, the, the reason that remittance was actually failed to make. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a case where the PCB do not require to be deducted. So meaning to say, as far as the Indian revenue is concerned, the moment that a deduction is made, whether the deduction is correct or otherwise, the remittance has to leave the Majikan bank account and give to the Inner Revenue Board in accordance to the employee's account. Right? So hence, we realize that your, your short deduction, your failure to deduct correctly right, for your PCB, the penalty is cheaper than you fail to remit what you have deducted to the Indian Revenue Board. So this particular case, it was settled with 1,000 per month, right? But then you and I know that the penalty that the Indian Revenue can actually hit on everybody can be as high as 20,000, right? So ladies and gentlemen, these two cases actually make us really, really think about the importance of your PCB calculator. How, do, how much you know about all these remittance that you need to actually pay attention to, okay? Now, 
we have a statement here to put the rate of penalty may vary from case to case. Yeah. So this 1,000 is after, after all the discussion and, and et cetera, it's settled with this amount. So you may actually have a situation whereby a remittance, uh, meaning you have already deducted the money from your employee, whether correct or not, the remittance of the money did not leave your bank account to the inner revenue. Uh, that penalty can vary. Okay. But generally, the, 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 the deduction part, the error in deduction, the penalty so far lah, for the number of cases that we have in hand, so far we are seeing the inner revenue stick to 200 per month. Okay, so pay attention to this very important. So failure to remit uh, on the money is important. Now, we have during the registration period, uh, having this question posted to us, right? Uh, by uh, the participants upon registration. A question was actually given to us. How do we, uh, um, how we are being selected for PCB audit? Okay, I will have to give you whatever the official uh, answers that the, the, the tax authority will be giving to you. Lah. Yeah, basically, there will be risk assessment criteria that the inner revenue will go through. It may go by industry, okay? Starting by looking for companies that is actually a lot more uh, uh, employee type, okay? Um, it may actually be selected uh, by certain group of employer, okay? It can be by location or it can be by information given by the third party. Now, who can be this third party? Dear employer, this third party may be employee, you know, right? So we actually have to take very, very close attention to PCB audit nowadays. So as you can see, the remittance penalty is actually very high, right? Ladies and gentlemen, right? So deduction correct or not, and the remittance as far as the inner revenue is actually treated as a separate issue and it actually being looked into at a very different light, okay? Now, there is this other question that was actually posed to us as well, right? Agnes, the calculation error can come by me not knowing which type of income required to subject to P, uh, the monthly tax deduction or the PCB calculation purposes, the, the, the potongan gaji. So generally, everything that you see here, everything that you see here is item that you need to actually include. All right? You need to actually include inside. Now, there is this question that was also posted to us. What about wages? Wages can be construed into uh, maybe these are just people part-timer, right? So there are questions that pose to us, hey, part-timer include or not include, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, as far as PCB calculation is concerned, wages is part of PCB calculation. But wages are paid in terms of payroll. Uh, wages are paid in to various people. Wages can be paid by me calling it a wages, but you are full-time working in the office. Number two, wages can be paid because you are only a part-time worker to me. Wages can be paid. Maybe you are nothing but a casual worker for me. Okay, what is the meaning and differentiation between a full-time, a part-time, and a casual? Ladies and gentlemen, part-time we are talking about generally what is your working hours is? How many working hours you have in a week? Whoever is a staff, whatever name you call them, if they clock in more than 30% of their working hours with you, okay, their, their, their scope that you assign to them require them to actually clock in 30% and more actually, 30% included, 30% and more, okay, of the hour for them to exercise their job, and to earn the wages, they are considered part-time, okay? If they complete the hours, they call full-time, okay? So then anybody who is below 30%, okay? Below 30%, we call them uh, casual. These are the casual workers. For those of you who knows all these HR rules, right? You will know that casual workers, they are totally outside already. They are totally outside of this employee-employer or master-servant relationship. So ladies and gentlemen, so as far as uh, PCB calculation is concerned, it's about the number of hours that you clock in if we are to answer your question about these wages, you know, part-time in or not. 
the part time is defined by the hour required for the person to deliver their work scope for you. Okay, now another one compensation of loss of employment is also part of the PCB calculation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure whether you are aware. If you have been following uh, Shai Ka Ong, uh, Coffee on Zoom, or some of our conferences, right, we will highlight to you on what the Panchana uh, uh, rules was actually having. Yeah, uh, Panchana, um, due to the COVID, they actually have this compensation for loss of employment to be exempt income, right? Exempt income. So the next question is, A, some of this payment that I pay to my employee now, uh, right? It can be part of the exempt income. So if it's part of the exempt income, do I still need to actually deduct the, the, the PCB from them when I give them, give them this particular payment? For instance, the compensation of loss of employment. Right. So for those income, uh, for those exempt income received by employee, such as compensation for loss of employment, do employers still need to deduct PCB? Ladies and gentlemen, this, this answer that we provide come from Shaka Ong, uh, come from Shaka Ong. Okay. So uh, it is our interpretation. Okay. The Inland Revenue has not interpreted this for us at the moment. Okay. On prudence basis, because there is no further update on employer responsibility when dealing with this particular exam income, which was actually previously announced, uh, we will take the stance that the PCB continue to be deducted. Okay, while the employee, uh, while the employee will report the income, ex exam income, and claim back your tax overpaid separately. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen. Today, our conversation, we talk about employer responsibility, employer responsibility. We, have, we are not talking about if you are reporting your tax as an individual. We talk about employer responsibility. So as far as employer responsibility in declaring and deducting a PCB, right? Actually, the loss of, the loss of compensation, uh, this one, uh, the compensation or loss of employment is part of, it's black and white, uh, is part of PCB deduction. Okay. So when, when doing the, the COVID, the Panchina, when they actually announced it to be exam, right? That particular things about the employer relationship was actually not being amended or highlighted or being mentioned at all. So as a result, we are giving this answer on a prudence basis. Yeah. You got me? Yeah. So that when you do the calculation, yeah, remember, we do not actually go for, uh, we don't actually hit by the penalties. Uh. So, okay. Now we know what to deduct. All right. So we know how to apply. We know what the inner revenue is looking for when it comes to deduction. Uh, we know that they are particular over you deduct, but not remit and how they actually penalize us when it comes to doing that on our employee responsibility. Now, let's look into how do I prepare this Form EA and eventually the Form E. Lah. So how do I prepare this Form EA? So EA form, uh, 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 how to call presentation, uh, may not be as simple as it is. So dear employer, a lot of the time, this form, we just rely on other people to do the preparation. Now, you are not wrong in doing that. But because PCB audit is very active right now, it's very active right now, maybe it's also good for your staff uh, or you have a meeting with your staff and to ensure they are updated with information at all time. Okay, so of course, this is how a form looks like and you will always see that, uh, you see, item number six here, did you see that? Compensation for loss of employment is part of the EA form. Uh. So all these things that we are highlighting here are the one that come under an employment income, right? And then the calculation will need to be done. Now, you will actually have item that is actually exempted from, uh, from what I call the, the, the uh, tax payment responsibility of the taxpayer when they receive the money. Lah. These are the one that we call, uh, that comes under total uh, uh, tax exemption allowance prerequisite give and benefit. So there are a classes, uh, there is a part uh, whereby certain, certain amount that you as an employer, you give to your employee, but you are excused from all this um, uh, payment of tax, okay? So pay attention to the form uh, uh, CP8. 
right? Because inside there, there is these exemptions that is actually highlighted, which would then be excused, will actually be excused from your deductions, okay? Now, this table, I will not go into detail because it is actually within your form EA, right? That you'll be able to go into it. However, employer, me included, can I actually plan myself accordingly, right? Unfortunately, the exemption that we tabled to you now has nothing to do with employees, employees who are having control over the company or the employee is also a sole proprietor of the company who pay him the money or the partners of that partnership business itself. Okay, so what does it mean by you having a control? You having a control when you actually have a power to make a decision, yeah, in relation to the company. You have the power to confer and until you have a power to make decision. Then the, by virtue of you having the power to do that, unfortunately, whatever that was actually exempted for your employee is not exempted to you. So like for me, my phone, my, you know, everything, is actually part of my EA form. It cannot be disclosed under that because Shaka Ong, I, Agnes Wong, having a control over the company, right? So ladies and gentlemen, while those exemptions, we can actually plan for that, but we are not able to plan for ourselves, all right? So we will still have to ensure that a, a, a proper calculation for it. For your information, uh, my, my tax team planned my personal tax for me. Uh. So at the end, they, they looked into whether they wanted to dig disclose my phone usage, okay, um, uh, on, on my EA form, show it as a benefit in kind of requisite, or to route it as another salary payment for me, right? So at the end of the day, the study came out, they might as well top up my salary at the same time, and then make this my personal expenses, right? So ladies and gentlemen, a lot of the time when we talk about employees, who are also employer, all right? This little bit of benefit here and there, you may want to do some planning, right? Speak to your tax agent if you are not under Shaka Ong, or you are welcome to come and call us and let's see whether we are able to service you. It's interesting to actually see the moment that we start looking into all these small little benefits, uh, what is the best way to pay it out? Yeah, uh, so it's actually an interesting topic to actually look into. You'll be surprised of all these small little items. Okay, now next, after I know how do I prepare this EA form, which is a responsibility of an employer, now the question is how do I actually submit the E form? An EA form and an E form is mirror to each other, ladies and gentlemen. So as a result, the submission of the form E is very much compulsory. It's compulsory documents that you have to submit. So the submission of E form, this is how an E form looks like. Now, of everything in the e-form, we wanted to only highlight the matter relating to number of employees. Okay, what is the meaning of number of employees? If you look into what the government have highlighted here, you will realize that for the new updates of the Form E mentioned that part-timers as well as interns, okay, yeah, and contract employees, contract employees here refer to refer to contract of service, uh, refer to contract of service because contract for service or any other payment we dealt through CP58, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have to pay attention to that. So, but however, we see that part-timers as well as contract employees, as well as student interns that was actually within now is part of the information that you uh, you need to actually record the numbers, right, into your EA form. Now, the one in the highlights is very important, ladies and gentlemen. The employee now also include individual who are responsible or engaged in the management of the organization, include company directors. Okay, now, who is this person? Okay, <clears throat> so this individual, uh, to me, is like talking about Dan Line Line, you know, other people. Other people uh, also include, so they actually extended the definition of content individual who are, content individual who are responsible and engaged in the management. But without 
uh, going into too deep into these cases because you may actually have different cases here and there. All right. So I wanted to highlight on directors alone first. So you see, as a director, I will have executive directors. I will have non-executive directors. What is the meaning of executive directors? And what does it mean by non-executive directors? Non-executive directors are directors that who are actually not on my daily operation. All right. So executive directors are the people that who is actually handling it. So these are directors that who probably are already taking salary also. Now, as a small SME, sometimes employer does this. I don't want to pay EPS also to myself. Uh, I'm not talking about, this is a case of a participant here. I'm talking about other people other than the 170 of us. Uh. So, okay. Uh, so some company may actually say, because I don't want to do EPS also. So what do I do? I call myself. Uh, I pay uh, uh, directly fee to myself, okay? So director fee is, uh, I pay myself uh, uh, twice a year, okay? I'm not paying myself every single month. So I pay myself uh, 30,000 in June. I pay myself 30,000 in December. That's it. So from on paper, I am not having a routine payment. So I'm not an employee. So, so I don't have to contribute EPS also. So I am not an employee. Right? I'm not an employee. So because I'm virtue of I'm not periodical under the EPF discussion, so I am not an employee. So PCB, when it comes to Lumbaga, I am therefore turned to be not an employee. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look into this definition that the inland revenue have changed in the form, you will realize that that is not what they meant already. That's not what they meant already. So they are talking about category number one, okay? Employees that who is actually really memang employee, full-time, part-time, contract employee, and interns. Uh, so the loop is big. Now the, the second part is important. People that who is actually engaged in the management. Okay. So they never say uh, about the routine payment, you know. So whatever that how you determine your EPA payment has nothing to do with this form. So basically, uh, there will be a lot more people construed under this particular form E. Okay and then come under the number of employee that you need to fill in. The moment that you are part of the Form E, ladies and gentlemen, you need to start having the EA form properly presented. Lah. Okay, so as an employer, we need to actually be paying attention that the Lembaga Hasil is actually uh, looking into the Form E uh, uh, submission very closely now. Yeah. In another words, uh, they are paying attention to personal tax filing also. Lah. Okay. So there is a question that was actually asked about what is the amount that I'm actually supposed to fill in my form E? So we answer here, directly here, yeah, on this particular amount here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, an answer given to you basically is everything, uh, whether in money or otherwise or more. Uh, what do you actually fill in in this column? Is wages, salary, overtime payment, remuneration, da, 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 and so on and so forth. Award, reward, allowances, that line, line. Lah. So basically, whether in money or otherwise. Okay? Now. Okay. The question now. A, if that is the case, ah, what if I am a dormant company, right? So effective from the year 2020, uh, 2014, all dormant companies or employees are mandatory to submit the Form EA. Actually, these rules actually came up. Okay, now let's refer to this particular table to ease who supposed to do the submission. Okay, I hope this table is a simple table for you. For Sandriam Berhad, Berhad as well as LLP, ladies and gentlemen, when you are having a Form E number assigned to you, when you are having employee, of course, you need to actually prepare your Form E and EA form for your employee. Now, when there is an E number being assigned to you, you don't have an employee. The law is compulsory wanting you to submit your Form EA. Form, I mean your Form E. Even everything goes on, this submission will need to go. Otherwise, there will be a penal, a penalty imposed upon you. Okay. Now, what, what about if your entity is just businesses? Meaning we are talking about sole proprietorship and partnership. Now, when a sole proprietorship and partnership, when you are being, or are you, when you're having a Form E number, because you are having an employee, of course, you must submit your Form E. Okay, huh? now, when you are having an E number, but you don't have an employee, even though you don't have an employee, 
you are recommended, uh, you are recommended to file a form E. It's a slight different from a Sandyan Brahat Brahat as well as LP here, whereby it's regardless whether uh, with or employee, you must submit. So this is mandatory, this is recommended. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, any rules from our experience uh, with the tax authority, it only going to get stricter. So if you do not have an employee and you still have an E number and you are sole proprietorship or partnership, I recommend you please file your form E while you do your cancellation. Okay? Otherwise, please file your form E. Don't play with that because Lembaga always tell you they're going to audit now, but they audit past year. You have no time to turn around any policy actually set, set on the current year on something that is actually happened already. Okay? Meaning to say, my presentation to you today in the year 2022, if you take the recommendation of not submit the Form E, if you are being selected for audit in the year 2024, ladies and gentlemen, and the rule in 2024, the recommended become regardless with or without employee, you get caught. My information become irrelevant. Understand? All right. So when you see this for prudent person, please do your submission. Otherwise, you go and do something about batalan of your E number. Okay. Huh? Now, when you don't have the E number, it says not compulsory, correct? But like I said, it's recommended. When it's actually no for the employee, no e, e number, but you're actually having an employee and your employee is not a full-time employee. Your employee is a part-time employee, uh, ladies and gentlemen. By virtue of the Form E application, the Form E itself already redefined who is employee that required to fill in with them. I suggest, please do your favor. Do yourself a favor. Get yourself registered. All right? So I repeat, uh, what is the meaning of part-timer? Part-timer means what is the official working hours? Official working hours, so long as a person spends 30% and more, he's actually a part-timer. Okay? Right? So not a casual worker. So pay attention to this. Don't get caught. Don't get caught because of part-timer. Don't get caught because of interns. Don't get caught because it's contract workers. Okay? All right. Now, questions, ladies and gentlemen. If my company, Sonia Brahat or Brahat, have no E number since incorporation, what should I do? Right? You see, uh, you look at this chart here. Sonia Brahat, Brahat and LLP, when I have E number, is compulsory. Even I don't have employee, right? Okay, question. What if, for some reason, I go and check, I don't have E number. What should I do? I don't have employee. Uh. I don't have employee. What should I do? The law says you must submit. Why? Because since 2020, uh, 2021-4, you already need to submit even though you are dormant. Even though you don't have an employee, you have to submit. Question. If I apply for the E number now because I want to comply, I apply with E number now, uh, I wanted to comply. Inner revenue, are you going to penalize me for whatever that I have not submitted since 2014? Important question, right? Now, this question is a question that we have been wanting to answer also. So we have been calling the, the, the officer, wanted to actually have things very official. Unfortunately, we did not manage to get them. We did not manage to get them. But we do get a verbal converse, conversation, uh, only a verbal. A verbal conversation to say that there will be forward-looking. Okay, there will be forward-looking. You come clean, you comply with the law, you don't have the e-number, but you got a company. You don't have an employee, but you got a company. By virtue of the fact that you have a company, you got to submit your e-number. In addition to your Form C, you have to submit your Form E now. Okay, you go and apply, come clean, you go and apply, it's actually forward-looking. But however, ladies and gentlemen, there is no media release on this question. There is no media release on, on this question. So, uh, whatever that I highlighted to you is actually a verbal confirmation that we got from the inner revenue. We do not know whether would they have inconsistent treatment when the case is actually being met by different officers. Okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, 
during the pandemic, one thing that is actually very, uh, very uh, actively being carried out, that is the company undergone winding up and closure. There is a lot of company in the past uh, 24 months being closed down due to the pandemic, they're not able to work or they just purely wanted to do some restructuring and size down the number of companies they have in hand. Okay, companies in the process of winding up. Do you know that the inner revenue has come up with the operational guideline eh? yeah, for company as well as uh, whether it's a Brahat or Sunil Brahat or ALP, whether it's dormant or otherwise, that in order to obtain a tax clearance, eh? in order to obtain the tax clearance for winding up purposes, the Form E submission is actually one of it, okay? So this is a real life case also, huh? this is a real life case. This is only like what, less than four months old, right? So as you can see, uh, the letter is dated 2021, November, and then this is rela relating to Surat Penyela Sayan Chukai, tax clearance. So this particular client of ours actually uh, 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 went to, wanted to actually uh, get a clearance from for this particular submission, uh, whereby the company has undergone a closure with SSM. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go and just close SSM without taking a tax clearance because income tax can always come back to you. Always. This is a particular example. Even though the company seems closed already, right? A full closure of a company is you need to ensure that the tax clearance from the inner revenue are also being given. As you can see for this particular one, in order to close this particular case, even though the SSM has no problem, uh, wow, first letter, close second letter, why wow, you know, it's actually undergone the gazetteer already. So the taxpayer, uh, the, 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 the employer thing, hey, you know, my company is under closure already, I don't have to bother about it. And then you see, in order to obtain the clearance, the inner revenue issue, a letter to say that I want you to give me, I want you to give me your form C for these two years, I want you to also give me your form E starting from 2018, 2019, 2020. Why 1819, 2020? Because they check through their record and they realize that the company do not have employee since 2018. Prior to that, prior to that, they were actually having uh, employee. So as far as the client is concerned, hey, I dormant already, you know. I dormant already since the year 2018. I got no body already. 2017, I already done, all right? 2018, I totally nobody. So I have not been submitting my Form E, okay? Now, actually this one, not only it came with the, the need of submitting the Form E, it also came with a compound for our client to pay, okay? As a result, in order to complete the tax clearance for this particular uh, client, we have to submit everything, including back submission of the Form E, and then pay off all the, all the compound that is required. Only this company is officially wind up or strike off from the system, officially, right? So it's very important, ladies and gentlemen. It is not that my company closed already. I already underdone whatever, whatever. So I don't actually have to do any more thing. No, 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 no. The inland revenue, I think less than two years ago, uh, last year, 2021, they came up with the operational guide. Right? Just now I mentioned operational guide on closure. And then inside there, all these clearances, as actually mentioned, Form E is one of the items to be closed. Okay. Now, the filing program uh, for the year 2022, ladies and gentlemen, a grace period has been extended. Uh, so everybody, you are given up to April 30th, right, to actually do your e-filing submission of your Form E. Uh, so you still have one month, uh, today is April the 1st, so you have one month for you to prepare your Form E correctly. Remember, go through all the penerangan, nota penerangan to ensure number of employee, how many EF form you are, you are issued, check through your PCB calculation one more time before you do all the remittance. Eh? Okay, now, failure to submit the Form E, ladies and gentlemen, this is what the government can actually impose. Okay, 200 to 20,000, yeah? Yeah, it can be at least this, this range, eh? also imprisonment and uh, together with the rest. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as an employer, right, just now we talk about contract of service, we talk about uh, interns, we talk about partners, uh, we, we talk about casual workers, we talk about uh, uh, part-timers, okay. So we will still have other, other cases whereby as an employer, you need to prepare a form CP58, 
Okay, so 50 cc8 basically is supposed to be already yesterday. Uh, uh, you already supposed to be already have everything provided to your agents already for their submission. So generally CP58, right? We are talking about uh, this type of amount that you need to fill in for them. Yeah, the incentive payment, whether it is actually uh, in monetary basis, in terms of money base or non-monetary, you need to record in here for them. All right. And then uh, who are all these people that you're actually giving? Basically, these are agents, dealers, distributors, or whoever who receive money. Yeah. Yeah. From the company arising from sales transaction or a scheme or carrying out, right? So it's actually required to actually fill in, in the form, right? Now, why is required to be in the CP58, right? These are the items in, is in here. When we pass you a copy of the slide, you can actually take a look at it. Okay. Now, what is actually important, which we found in CP58, which we realized that the inner revenue have not actually picked it up, is the payer responsibility. As far as CP58 is concerned, you record everything that you paid. If you have not paid, if you only accrue, you have not paid, you don't put into your CP58, right? So basically, it's a payment basis. But however, the law of tax, the tax law of Malaysia says that the recipient, the recipient, Actually, the moment that you are an agent, distributor or whatever, or you are a freelancer, lah, actually your income is considered business source. The moment that your income is business source, ah, you are actually an accrual basis person. Right? So if you are a recipient of CP58, whatever that you earn, they have not received, ah, do you need to disclose? Or not? Very important question. Actually, by, by virtue of the principle of the law, you need to. But we know most of the CP58 recipient, they only repeat their, they, they only report their income based on CP58. Right? This is the can of womb that we don't want it to open. <laughs> we don't want it to open. Right? But maybe this may be a potential personal tax audit item by the Inner Revenue Board. Huh? Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, from the employer perspective or payer perspective, huh, you remember your consequences of failing to prepare your CV today is also the, the same penalty. Yeah, so employee responsibility is actually quite high. Okay, now there are more forms that an employer you need to file in nowadays. Right, this form relating to this CP uh, uh, 22, CP 22A, etc. So, who are they? What are all these forms? We are talking about uh, notification on new employee. Yeah, we are talking about when there is a cessation of an employment or cessation by reason of death. Okay, for any employee in the private sector, reason of death, right? Important, huh? Okay, so um, a lot of time as a company secretary, yeah, uh, I'm also a company secretary in addition, or I'm also a tax consultant, uh, a licensed tax agent, huh? Uh, generally, when there is a director, touch wood, uh, when there is a director who passed away, then we will receive the secretary will receive uh, the notification from the management. Uh. So we will then, uh, you know, like inform the SSM, change the director, etc., etc. Now, if that director also ambil gaji, uh, the director is also an executive of the person. Do not forget, uh, do not forget. You need to report this particular form. Okay. Now, cessations of employment uh, of the public sector, it will be twenty two B. 22A is for the private sector, okay? And then, don't forget, don't forget, if your employee leaving Malaysia for more than three months, you second your staff. You second your, your, your staff for three months, uh, more than three months overseas, or you transfer them to a subsidiary company or whatever, don't forget, uh, more than three months, you need to also file a CP21. Uh, now, failure to file is exactly the same penalty, right? So all the movement of your employee, please remember to also file to the relevant authority. Last thing in my presentation today is actually the keeping records. Okay, keeping of records, uh, if, compute, uh, if computers are used to record the transaction, original source documents such as it, uh, whatever is the documents is, uh, should be retained. Even though the tax audit right now, whether it's income tax audit or PCB audit or all sorts of audit, generally the government does starting to accept digital documentation. Okay. Uh, however, from our conversation with them, they do mention uh, original source document will, should, will still be retained. They may not use it for their audit, but upon request, 
you need to be readily available to give it to them. Okay, now where the original document are in notary form, okay, the document can be retained in such form. So say for example, you go into a total paperless environment already. So meaning uh, there is no another form or document other than that paperless documentation workflow, right? So ensure that the workflow storage and everything is there to prove that the original document is electronic documents, right? So ladies and gentlemen, work closely with your IT to ensure uh, all these things actually done properly over at the workplace because for auditing purposes, record keeping is important. Yeah, the the uh the, the system documentation include accounting manual charts etc etc and other documents as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the presentation that I have today regarding employer responsibility. So, if you need support, uh, if you need support in the preparation of form E, or you need to uh, people to advise you a little bit uh, on the form E, we can assist. Yeah, keep keep in touch with us. If you need people to say that, hey, why not you also handle the personal tax or some of the key management, we can handle as well. Actually, we have quite a number of these type of clients, right? Whereby the directors or whatever, they don't want to keep their own personal file. They don't want to keep, right? So they just say, okay, la, I just get a tax agent to handle everything. So there is a file. So anything that comes from the lumbaga, hey, call my tax agent because everything is with them, right? Or if you wanted to ensure your calculation as three really is actually uh, accurate and you are compliant with the law, we, are, we can actually via our HR partners to assist you to implement a, a, a payroll system to it as well. Do scan our QR code, yeah, and keep in touch with us, okay? So now, ladies and gentlemen, the time now is at uh, 11.10, yeah, so we spent about an hour with each other just now. So I can see that there is actually a lot of questions that was actually posted in the chat room, right? So scan the QR code, yeah, keep our contact, ladies and gentlemen. This is my tax team's uh, general line. Yeah, so if you have anything, drop the message to us. We are more than happy to keep in touch with you or answer any of your questions as well, okay? So I shall stop share right here, okay? And I intend to uh, pin a few of my colleagues uh, in the audience here, right? To call them up, yeah? To actually assist with some of the question. Mei Chong is my tax manager. Yeah. So allow me to actually pin a few of my colleagues up here. Hold on a second. Yeah, behind the scenes, actually, we have quite a number of colleagues that is with us answering your questions. May, would you be able to unmute yourself and let me know whether uh, um, have we answered most of the questions or is there anything that we need to? actually highlights here as well yeah uh yeah actually we're busy uh for this whole day so like, i mean this morning this section and hour so most of the uh, question has been answered uh right. they still have some i think uh we just open for you to answer okay, okay. so have i have i um have i actually click all my backstage uh, colleagues already who was actually assist in the answering one two three four five six seven seven of us today or do we have anyone else that's here uh maybe cyrus you can help me to actually pin as well for my text team yeah so ladies and gentlemen all the questions that behind the scenes are uh, which has actually been answered is actually by everyone here that you are seeing so me which question should i actually go for uh that has not been answered maybe then mm. i can actually take on to those yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, I want my, my colleagues to key all the answers in the chat room as well, right? Even as I answer you verbally, okay, um, uh, I, I actually wanted them to actually answer themselves. So you can go to the chat room, do your copy, right, before you exit today's uh, Zoom, right, and it becomes your FAQ that you can use with your team, okay? So like I said, today our objective is to share, yeah, to actually interact with each other. Um, all right, okay. So, what are the questions? So, uh, May, you are posting it to me here, is it? Uh, I did post one question to you, you may answer that one, then I sort out the list of the question for you later. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay, um, all right, okay. So, one of our uh, one, one of our participants here, the tax agent should have advice. <laughs> Okay, so this question uh, is, a, is, a, is a tricky one. Uh. It's, a, it's a tricky one. Okay, the tax agent should have advised a client to submit their Form E, but they fail to do so uh, once incorporated. 
due to companies being dormant, the tax agent still need, hold on, uh, still need to inform the client that they need to submit. Therefore, since that there's been so many years since the last submission, the employer didn't submit anything at all. So what will happen next if we start to submit next year? Okay, now to answer these questions, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, all the tax agents. Uh. Generally, if you look into your engagement with your tax agent, uh, your tax agent's responsibility uh, always remains at the company submission, which is form C, form R. Yeah. However, uh, if you have any employee, uh, an employer-related question, like for example, form E, right, which is the employer responsibility, uh, not a company, not a company uh, role, is employer role, right? Which, which is a more of a HR matters. I'm sure if you keep in touch with your tax agent, uh, they will definitely answer you, right? So in our practice, normally we do this. Normally we, we do this for the submission of Form E, right? When it is time to submit the Form E, normally we will do an email blast to our client first, to our client to say that if you need an assistant in the submission of Form E, please contact Shai Ka Ong because to us, it's a business, ma. so we will always. However, we must say, some clients choose to prepare themselves. Some clients choose to do the preparation themselves instead of uh, relying on a tax agent to do this filing. Yeah, simply because, simply because uh, um, it is very related to the payroll and sometimes they just let uh, may, maybe the, the, the HR handle the matter. We can fully understand this approach. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with this approach, ladies and gentlemen, nothing wrong. Today, Shaka Ong updating this Form E or employer responsibility is because we are starting to deal with uh, tax cases, tax audit cases coming from it. And then we realize that, hey, this is a sector that a lot of employer may be lacking of information, may be lacking of information. So hence, we have this session to highlight this, your other responsibility, not only as a company to file a company tax to the tax authority, but as an employer to file the correct information to the tax authority. Ah, so however, if you need a tax agent to handle a form E, you can, you can engage them. Yeah, you can engage them and then uh, definitely a tax agent will come with a separate fee for it. Or you may want to say, okay, I may not need you to file it, but I may need you to do certain review for me, right? Can it be arranged? I believe it can be arranged as well. It's about the scope of services that we are, we are talking about. Okay? All right. Huh? So now, uh, next question. Uh, so there are questions that's actually being posted here. So May, are you going to post me the next question? I hope that I have answered that. So maybe I will need one of my colleagues to actually type the, the, uh, the answer that I just made. <laughs> so the scope of, uh, of uh, uh, tax consultants is always, uh, is always by default submission of Form C and Form R. Okay. Now, actually, uh, as a tax consultant, uh, I speak for everybody here. I speak for all the tax consultants here. Uh, our scope generally does not include tax audit handling as well. So tax audit handling is always being handled as a special work as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, maybe you will say, hey, hello, you know, you do your tax filing. Then how come the tax audit you are not handling? Not necessarily, because it's of a very different pair of eyes. You see, when, we, when, when a tax consultant, right, okay, because why I'm explaining this, I, I realized 50% of the participants is actually not my client, <laughs> 50%. So I'm speaking on behalf of all the consultants here, all the tax consultants here. The moment that the, a tax, the, your tax agent handle your tax compliance work, right, they rely on your representation. Whatever information that they, they, they give to you, okay, uh, I mean, you, you give to them, they rely on the accuracy and then they prepare the tax computation. However, when the audit is being done, they scrutinize down into the documentation, which a lot of time, all those small little documentation may not be given to the tax consultant at the first place. Right? So as a result, there will always be differences.
between when a tax agent do a tax compliance work and when a tax agent looking at the tax review work, uh, a, a tax audit work. So there is a difference there. Your, it's the degree of review of that documentation. Uh, yeah. So, so I, I hope that actually helps to actually clear the air about the role of a tax consultant. Okay. So right now we talk about Form E. Form E generally is not by default as part of the, uh, how do you call, uh, tax agent's work. Lah, right? So you need to keep in touch with them. Now, like I said, in Shaka Ong, uh, it is our practice on a yearly basis, we will have this email blast to, to, to highlight. But we also do not go and call them one by one. To be very honest, we don't. Yeah, because it's still very much depending on them whether they wanted to actually engage us separately or not on that particular engagement. Okay, May, maybe you want to post me the next one. Okay, uh, questions from another participant. Does employee require to submit uh, CP, CP22? Ah, okay. Does employee require to submit CP22 for intercompany transfer? Okay, um, uh, this is Woon, Woon Siu Wei. Uh. Okay, uh, Woon, generally when there is a change of majikan, uh, right? If there is a change of majikan, you should do it already. If you do intercompany charging, meaning uh, this person remaining this payroll, and then you do intercompany charging, you, you issue invoice to your subsidiary, then I would say, then there is no change in master-servant relationship by your employer. Okay, so your documentation will very much determine on your CP filing. Okay, however, if the person leave the country, right, there is one part, if the person leave the country, uh, that by virtue of leaving the country more than three months, that information will need to actually highlight it to the Indian Revenue Board already because the calculation of PCB, whatever, there will be changes to the particular person. Okay, all right. Okay, May, I will just rely solely on your posting to me. Eh? Okay, questions from Catherine. If company can provide for director to use, uh, for director to use and corporate tax purposes, tax, okay, I don't quite understand all this already. Uh, add back one third. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, okay. Okay, provide, uh, okay, oh, uh, if company car, okay, if company car provide for director to use uh, and corporate tax, for corporate tax purposes, you already deduct one third private usage uh, for, uh, for expenses incurred for that car. In this case, director EA form, can we leave out the BIK? The answer is no, yeah, Catherine. The answer is no. Now, your, your Form C tax treatment is your Form C tax treatment, okay? You, as a person who is using it, you have benefited from it, okay? You benefited from it, the BIK remains, okay? It's totally different. This one, we have, in fact, uh, uh, checked with officer before, and then in one of our past tax conference, right, I remember the officer answered it in the audience as well before. It's considered totally separate. So the BIK treatment in your EA form as your employer, what you have to do, you still have to do that. You still have to have it in. Unfortunately, not by virtue of that. Your wanted at back is because of private usage of the company. The company, under the company law, ladies and gentlemen, under the company law, under section 33 of the company act, 33 one of the company act, it says that uh, the expenses is only allowable if it's 100% wholly and exclusively incurred in the production of the income, right? So by virtue of it is not wholly and exclusively, you do an add back is because you are satisfying the requirement under 33.1. It has nothing to do with the benefit that the person is actually using of the car, unfortunately. So it will still apply. Now, if I may uh, go deeper into this uh, car usage of BIK, ladies and gentlemen. Nowadays, uh, if you go and look for a car, okay, you realize that the car company is starting to do certain things already. What do they do? Uh? They're starting to say, I rent you the car, right? You go to luxurious car, BMW, La Mers, La, maybe Porsche, uh, who try to you know, sell their car nowadays. They all come with leasing, leasing program, ladies and gentlemen, leasing program. So a lot of people will say, hey, if it's leasing, uh, 
then no BIK can. Uh. I just claim it as a rental. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to pay very close attention when you are going into this kind of car BIK, right? You ask the company, what is the document they are going to give to the, uh, the, the car company? Uh? What is the document they are going to give to the company? What is the document? Okay, I can tell you a lot of time, they still treat it as a car sale to you. They are just doing a guarantee buyback of the car value only. So the documentation that they give to you, even the sales person tell you it's a leasing rental, but the documentation is still very much higher purchase related. You are still come under your whatever, your, your BIK calculation table, your capital allowance table, actually everything is the same. Okay, take note of that very important one. Huh? This one is an extension for what uh, Catherine part is actually about. Now, uh, our team, for some of the other questions, you can continue answers. Yeah, I will just pay attention to what May posted to me. There is this question uh, by Justina Tang. As a tax agent, what did you do to help the client? Okay, now, um, just, Justina, just like what I have mentioned, uh, as a tax agent, a lot of the, the time, the, the, the first things that we do, the first thing that we do uh, is to get appointed uh, as an agent handling Form C, Form R. That is normally the core competency of a tax agent. So if you as a client, uh, you wanted a help on uh, review of the Form E, uh, checking the accuracy, it has to be, uh, how do you call, inform and engage the tax agent. Uh, it has to be done that way. Uh, in fact, the team is also not the same. When you deal with the Indian revenue, it's also not the same. So in fact, when we get clearance, uh, like clo closure cases, uh, get clearance, you also have to deal with all this. Uh, this one has to do the submission of Form C. This one is a Form E. You know, as per what the, the actual, actual letter that we show you, we, we sanitize it, but we show it to you, right? It's basically, it's Form C, Form E, everything. So if you need help, if you wanted to ensure that you are not, um, uh, you, you have all your tax, tax risks being covered, uh, you have all your tax risks being covered, I suggest that uh, uh, speak to the tax agent and enlarge that particular scoop. Yeah, or you can always call Shai Gao, okay? And then we'll see how we help you onward. Okay, there is a question here coming from uh, Will Yap, uh, Will Yap, uh, Mr. Will Yap. Um, Hi, Agnes. How about freelance basis wages, freelance accounts? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, whether you call them freelance, you call them whatever name uh, it is, right? We talk about the scope. If the person is having contract for service, okay, this person under your CP58, okay, we don't touch them on your EA form, your form E. Okay, we do this important distinction first. Okay, now, if the, this person, right, in your so-called freelance agreement, uh, in your freelance agreement, the engagement that you sign, uh, carries elements of employment. For example, the freelance can have uh, uh, annual leave. La, the freelance can have, uh, you know, those characteristics of an employment. Uh, your contract may actually be challenged, right? Pay attention to document that you have. Huh? On the basis that your freelance, for some reason, is actually uh, a contract of service, right? Then we look into the scope that he or she has to execute for the company, whether will exit the 30% of the official hours. If it exit, it's come under part-timer, go straight into under contract employee, come under your number employee, come under your, EA, your, your form E, come under your EA form. Okay, huh? so we firstly decide, is this contract for service or is this contract of service? If it's contract of service, we talk about potentially, uh, not potentially, contract of service, we talk about master service relationship arise. We talk about the person can take leave, the person can this, the person can whatever, whatever. The person entitled to, uh, I don't know, you know, like whatever that normally the employment will have, right? The substance of it, then it will trigger this, right? So yeah, it will actually pretty much flow until here. So ladies and gentlemen, like I said, the moment that an, an authority look into, uh, from a legal perspective, looking into source document, all these things will be unfold. 
right? But in the event of a compliance work, right, you seldom see this unfold. Okay, now, nah. all right, okay. I hope, uh, um, uh, Will, yep, I have answered your question. Now, next is uh, questions from Wong Mui Lin. Uh. Do we need to file CP22A for a director who ceased to draw salary but still a director in the board? Okay, I will give you a yes answer. I will give you a yes answer. Why? Uh? If I rely on Company Act, if I rely on Company Act, the Company Act has now do a differentiation. What differentiation has it made? Uh? The Company Act says, director, your director fee and your director benefit, your fee and your benefit as a director, uh, okay, it requires shareholder approval. It has to be, you know, it requires approval. Okay. Uh? However, but if you are holding a position, more like a staff position, that part, you don't actually need approval. That one is a payroll matter. So meaning uh, a director nowadays, under the law, if we look into the company act, right, they also understand that you as a director, you carry two hats. You are wearing two topi. One topi is as an employee, okay, whereby you are also an employer, but you're having a control. Another hat is you act as a director, right? So to answer uh, Wun Mui Lin, I will treat that to be two roles and then whatever that your, um, you know, as an employer, whatever you have to do, you should still do. You should still file and say the person has no longer take the salary and then would have excuses from this role. You probably have another person engaged or uh, being employed for that position anyway. Okay. All right. Okay. Next questions. I'm just seeing whether, okay. Uh, from uh, Mio Awi, um, how about drop ship? They gain some small commission based on the uh, affiliate link shares in SOAP. Okay. Don't quite get what does it mean by drop ship. Are you talking about uh, people who earn commission income? Meaning, uh, I may have done certain referral. Uh, <laughs> I, MS, can I uh, sure here? yes please do okay uh, dropship is a, is a, is like a agent okay it's a freelance agent okay, okay. they might uh, have a you know share a link whatever so people will click on the affiliate links oh. to uh, Facebook Instagram uh, you know any any uh, type of uh, social media and then when people click on the link they you know make a purchase and they, they, they be a referral member of that uh, dropship. So they gain some certain commission. Commission. Ah, faham. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much for clarification. Yeah. So meaning I am the person who sent you this link. So whoever came through this link, I get a cut, right? Okay. I get a cut. Now, this is a CP58 issue. This is a CP58 issue. The payment will go for CP58. Right? Okay, so it will not come under the, uh, how, how do you call it? It will not come under what we call the employer responsibility. Yeah, it will not. Mm. I hope you answer your question. <laughs> okay, thank you, Agnes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, May, is there any other further questions that need my, my touching up here? Okay, uh, from Geraldine Wong. Okay. What is characteristic of an employee if just go and help anything employer requests? No stated MC, no stated leave, how to justify? Okay, very good. Geraldine, if the contract uh, is like, um, okay, let's talk about simple example. Uh, freelance accountant. Freelance accountant. Uh, meaning uh, I come in, I do account, then I go. Okay, those kind of issue. So I'm not actually bound by any of the leave. I'm not bound by all these other things. I suggest that you make sure the characteristic to be contract for service by having that particular person issue an invoice to you. If the person have an entity. If the person don't have an entity, 
this person uh, sign a simple contract for service with, with them. You know, like, I engage you, there is a tenor yeah, from this time to, 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 to this time. And this is the work scope. And then in the event of default, I can, I can terminate the contract or whatever. Yeah, and then you are entitled to this remuneration, yeah, this fee payment or whatever the that 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 particular work is, yeah. And then if this and then I also make a mention, uh, if this payments, uh, I mean this payment is inclusive of a uh, service tax or any government tax that may be imposed, meaning right, this person is providing a service to you, right? So if the person eventually set up a company for it, okay. Is accountant will bound by service tax. Accountancy services or services, professional services is part of the service tax. Yeah? Part of the service tax. So if the person eventually hit a certain threshold, send you the, the, the invoice that you say, hey, the fee that I previously mentioned uh, is already SST inclusive, for example, or SST exclusive, right? So you make that distinction through the correspondence. I'm sure you will, you're able to do that. Yeah, okay. Um, there's a question from Michelle Chong. Yeah. Hi, if the company provide motor vehicle to employee, but the vehicle is not registered under company name, do we need to declare BIK in EA form? You don't declare BIK if the company is not an owner, okay? But you have to declare perquisite. It is even worse, <laughs> even worse. Everything that was spent on the on that particular uh how do you call everything that was actually spent on that particular uh, car paid on behalf can it can now become an income of the the employee whom you provided for. So that is why right, just now I mentioned about my 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 phone, right? I mentioned about my my phone. Why? We are a tax consulting firm, right? So, of course, they try to be as efficient as possible, right? So, they were asking me, hey, if I wanted it cheap, right? You register under your name, uh, you can go for cheap packages and et cetera, et cetera. Oh, I think, yeah, it's actually probably correct uh, instead of a corporate plan. So, of course, I have the name under myself. Lah. So, the moment that I have it under myself, so who pay the phone bill? Let me self-declare. My company helped me to pay my phone bill. Then my taxi pick up the case and say, hey boss, this is not tax efficient because everything is actually going to come under your perquisite. Since I'm going to come under your perquisite, why not I directly give you, I call it as an income, then I, I complain all. You call it as my income, then I will have to pay tax all. Then my, my staff tell me, don't worry, I also give you EPF portion. Ah, so you have money back into your EPF, eh? Or then it, it, it cooled me down some more. Then I also calculate. Okay, worth. Then I convert myself to uh, personal on this particular one. So Michelle, on the car, right? We don't know the real situation, right? On your case, what is the value of the car, etc., etc. If you are keen to actually find out more and explore more information, welcome to actually scan our QR code. Okay, which I will post it up later and keep in touch with my team. Okay, and then we see how we can actually help you forward. Now, the time is uh, 11.34. Yeah, so uh, we are also concerned with the time. So I believe our team, have we answered all the questions in the chat room? May, have we answered um, all? Yes. We have. Uh? Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, we are very happy that, you know, we managed to uh, answer a lot of these questions and then um, you can now actually have a free FAQ, I would say, uh, a free FAQ, which is in the chat room, copy them, some of the questions coming from other people, which will be of, uh, very important and, and fruitful for you. It may clear some of your, your doubts, okay? So this is the team behind the, the, the scene helping to answer all those questions that you have. Allow me to share my, uh, my, my screen for you to actually do the scanning. Right. Please scan our QR code, continue to keep in touch with us, okay? And continue to keep in touch with all our upcoming coffee on, on, on Zoom. We wanted to be able to, uh, you know, like really give back what we know, what we have encountered to the businesses because we know business is already tough. Compliance call for whatever the government have is expensive, right? We wanted to actually assist to make your business as efficient as possible as well. Keep in touch with us. Uh, for any support that you need, 
yeah, so that we can we will be able to help you forward as well, right? So thank you very much, everybody, for your attention. Yeah, for my team, please type a thank you message and also drop our phone number. Oh yeah, we have our phone number here. Huh? So for those of you who wanted to actually, uh, um, you know, like have a copy of our slide, you may also uh, drop your message to us as well. Yeah, and then we will arrange a PDF copy over to you. Okay, thank you very much for your attention, everyone. Your participation means a lot to us and we look forward to the next sessions with you. All right, so stay in touch with us. You, you may sign off now. Thank you very much, everyone. Keep in touch. Keep in touch. <laughs>